Hey, Chad here with LearnMixReality.com, and here we are in part number three of this tutorial series where I'm creating a game from start to finish that runs on the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. So the first session, we actually created the scene that you're seeing here, a simple cube that has three more cubes on it that also has three spheres inside of those cubes. It's a shell game. And we did that the first session. The second session was a much longer session uh, where we dove into uh, the actual code where I made a plugin called Core Logic. And so we create this shell game logic with this code and test to go along with it. And our test is a whole lot more code than the actual logic. But it's well tested and we'll know if something changes uh, if we have any issues. But now that core logic is done, where it's basically finding a random number, in this case from 0 to 3, then and then raises events based off of, you know, what happens, uh, we need to tie that into our game here. That's what we're going to do during this session. I'm going to create a new script. In fact, I'm going to delete this uh, test plugin uh, script that we used uh, last time around. We don't need him anymore. And I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to call him um, game controller. I'm going to create a new game object. An empty game object called uh, game controller. And we're actually going to tag him with the game controller tag that Unity does out of the box. I'm also going to reset him to position 000. So I'm going to go ahead and save the scene. So I'm going to open up uh, that game controller script. And I will know sometimes uh, working with plugins that Visual Studio gets confused and like it doesn't uh, highlight the mono behavior. If you run into that, the quickest way to fix it is to go to your references, uh, go down to the Microsoft C Sharp, change copy local to false, and then uh, rebuild, Control Shift B to rebuild. And then uh, you know, I see we get it back, we change it back to true and rebuild. And by doing that, we, we get our IntelliSense back and everything else. So it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it will. And if so, that's that's a quick way to get it resolved. Well, we definitely know we want to use our plugin. So we're going to say using Core Logic, And we're going to want to hook up our events. So all those events we created in the last session, uh, we want to do that. So we're going to say hook up uh, Core Logic events. We'll just generate that method. Hit control dot and do that. So let's go ahead and create the variable shell game logic, which we'll is called core logic. And in awake, we will actually say core logic equals new uh, shell game logic. We do need to tell it. Uh, what we want for now, I'm just going to pass in three and three uh, because we know that our game is only going to have three items and we want to have a max of three strikes. So, so if we want to, we could expose that out to the editor. In fact, might as well do that. So, let's do a uh, serialized field and we're going to say private int number of items. So instead of number of items, we can pull that uh, from a different object here in a second. Uh, but for a number of strikes, we will do that. So number of strikes. And we'll pass that in here. And our other serialized field, instead of number of items, we actually want to get a list of those items. So it's going to be a private uh, game object, be an array of those. 
and we'll just call them item container. Now we're in control of this, so chances are it'll be okay. We're only going to have one of these, but just to make sure we only have one, let's go ahead and try to sort of make it a singleton, create an instance of it. So uh, private static game controller instance and public static uh, game controller instance. And this will also make it easier when we need to call this from other scripts and stuff like that later on too. So as long as the instance is not null, uh, we're just going to return the instance. Otherwise, we're going to say uh, game object equals game objects. Find game object with tag. And that's going to be the game controller. Need to make a game object. And then my instance is simply going to be the game objects game controller okay so back in our hookup core logic events let's actually take our core logic start turn match made let's see what else we got uh, match not made of course um, checking item we also created events for selected item Set complete and we end the game over. And then we have one more, and that was item reset. So now we have hooked up our items. We also want to, I'm going to copy all these. And whenever you do uh, events, you also want to make sure uh, you handle on destroy and unregister them. All right. So I'm going to get rid of the update. Here and instead of all these not implemented, let's at least just debug some information out. So debug log. Item reset. Debug log. Uh, game over. And uh, debug log, reset complete, debug log, selected item. And for this one, we're actually going to print out the ID as well. And similarly, we're going to say checking item and put a dollar sign in front of that. No match made. 
is strike. This one's going to be match made, of course. So in our start, let's go ahead and um, create our own start turn method. I'm just put some comments in here for now, but you know, basically we want to prepare our items uh, for the new turn, and that means you know we'll loop through them, uh, loop through the containers. Make sure the P's are covered up. And then we'll actually hide uh, the P from the container, right? So that uh, the player can't cheat. Then, if we want to animate anything, we'll animate uh, the items here, animate the containers. Uh, we play anim animation sounds, and uh, then we reset our items. So that that should be core logic dot reset items, and then the actual uh, event, our start turn event. Move him up to the top here. We're going to invoke uh, start turn. We can use the new uh, name of operator. Start turn. And we're going to do it just a little over a second out. So when we first start, we're going to call our start turn, which will do all this work, including. Uh, telling the core logic to reset all the items that we're starting the turn basically and then whenever the core logic determines that hey you should start a new turn it's going to call it's going to raise the event and in that event we're all we are going to start the turn uh, but we're going to put a little delay this will allow us to do um, you know animations so uh, delay to allow for animations. So I'm going to build this. It succeeded, so let's go back to, to Unity here. And our game controller, let's drag the game controller script to the object. We'll change our number of strikes to three. And then for the item containers, we're going to select each one of our items. First, we're going to lock uh, this in the inspector. Then we're going to select all three items and drag them over to the items container element. So now we have items one, two, and three. Okay, so we can uh, save the scene and instead of passing in this three into the shell game logic, what we're going to pass in is item containers dot length. So at this point, we have created a game controller uh, that's talking to the core logic. It's hooked up to the events, so it'll know when the events are fired. Now, in order to just be able to try something out uh, before we close up, down here to start turn, we're going to uh, create a temporary check for item one. We're going up here, look at our console, hit play. So you can see we got the event item reset called 
reset complete. We actually were uh, checking item one and no match was made. It strike is false. So the events are firing. We're getting the data back as we would expect. So that's very good. I'm going to stop playing, go back over here to Visual Studio and uh, delete this little test line. So what we'll end up doing next time is hooking up our input so that we can actually start into the gameplay. So in this session, we were able to take uh, that plugin and access it from our game controller script. Our game controller script has these item containers. So it knows what items it's going to be working with. The code has all the events hooked up. And we added some logging information and we were able to even put a little test uh, call out there for uh, check for item and we saw the different events get kicked off in the next session uh, we're going to actually hook in our motion controllers and work with this in the mixed reality device itself um, and then from there we'll actually get back to working inside the editor uh, just for speed of iteration. Well, hopefully you're finding this series beneficial. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. If you are enjoying this, I do plan on creating content over at LearnMixedReality.com. So make sure to check that out as I'll be launching that site soon. But I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video.